Well, hello everyone. I was asked to chat with you about network infrastructure. Now, network infrastructure can be a really huge topic, so we'll try to break it down into a couple of key components. Now, before we dive in, I thought it'd be good to define infrastructure itself. So Merriam-Webster tells us really there's, if we exclude the military infrastructure, that's part of the definition, we'll just include these two main ideas. A system of public works or the resources uh, required for an activity. We can also think of infrastructure as the underlying foundation or the basic framework that you need for something. So if we extend that a little bit to network infrastructure, then we could be talking about the stuff that we need to get a particular thing done or the real building blocks, the foundation of the network itself. Now we can easily be led astray when we start thinking about things from our own perspective or by something that you happen to be working on. If you're working on wireless, if you're working on an application, something like that. So to avoid that, let's cover both of those definitions. So let's take the easy one first. We'll talk about the underlying foundation or the basic framework. Now the bones of a network is often called the cable plant and we could be talking really about just about anything at this point but really if we break it down to its components then we're really talking about cables jacks you know all the cabling or the wires that you use to plug something in and get it all the way back to what we'll call the wiring closet we've got a couple of different kinds of jacks that we commonly see and RJ45 is probably the common one in the wall plate diagram that you see on the on the right hand side that's an RJ45 jack for the data, and above that is an RJ45 male and female connector. So we plug into a wall jack that goes somewhere, right? There's lots and lots of wiring in the walls. And of course, we might be doing wireless, so we wouldn't be using the wires at all, but your wireless networking has to go back to somewhere as well. Now an important concept here is that we could be talking about straight up data networking, but we also might include telephony, security, video conferencing, all of those kinds of things. So sometimes the cable plant even includes, you know, older coaxial cable. We could also be talking about WAN connectivity in addition to LAN connectivity, so local area network and wide area network. And all of this talks about how things get from all of these end nodes back to some kind of powered connectivity. So all of the things in the cable plant are often considered unpowered. And in the bottom I've got two diagrams for you. You can see that a wiring closet has a lot of, well, wires in it. They can be very complex like the one on the left or they can be very, very simple like the one that might be in a basement or have limited connectivity for a, for a small office, home office sort of deployment. If we sort of flesh out the idea of wiring closet, then we start to talk about the things that are actually powered in there. And we could be talking about modems for connectivity. We could be talking about switches, routers, wireless nodes. Um, all of those access points all go back to the wiring closet somehow. We might be including some additional power concerns like power over ethernet because you know you see access points sprinkled all over the place or voice over IP phones sprinkled all over the place, how do they get powered? That's usually from the networking equipment today. Now, in the middle of the bottom here, we've got a nice, very clean wiring closet. You might call this a switching center. Uh, and that's everybody's sort of real ideal sort of room that they want to work in. But it's not uncommon to see the one in the upper right where things are a little more a who. You've got lots and lots of cabling and cable management becomes a really important idea. Now the wiring closets have to go back to some place too and so it's very common for those to go back to a larger switching room or maybe a data center. And when we start talking about data centers we start talking about some other really big ideas. Clearly there's the network connectivity but also massive amounts of storage and then massive processing, lots of lots of memory, lots and lots of processors to make all of this so stuff sort of happen. 
But as far as infrastructure goes, there's a lot more to a data center than just networking, storage, and processing. When you are responsible for running a data center, you've got to worry about power to the data center. And data centers, if you read articles today, are massive consumers of power. But then there's also the redundancy for that power. Heating and cooling are absolutely important. They're critical components when you start thinking about running a data center. But then, of course, there's all the software that might exist in the data center and the software that folks use to connect to the data center. We can do clustering in a data center, parallelization, and of course, virtualization and virtual machines. So these are all really important ideas when we start talking about the data center and the data center infrastructure. The most common model that we use today when we're connecting to something that's on the web or when we're connecting two machines together is what we call the client server model. So source and destination IP address, source and destination ports, TCP, UDP. This is the central idea that we use when we're connecting from some node to another node. And of course, all of this stuff gets wrapped up into a very simple idea called the cloud. Well, what is the cloud? Well, a cloud is really a data center somewhere that has all the software that we need to connect to it. But we can't forget that somehow we're connecting to that cloud or that data center somehow. And the data center may be anywhere. So a really good question is, where is the data going? What is the actual flow path? And then we start to understand the network infrastructure that we happen to be using. So. What if we're not really interested in the nuts and bolts? You know, the wiring, the routers, the switches, the jacks. What if we don't care about any of that stuff? Well, remember that infrastructure can also be the resources that you're using for a particular activity. So it might be, you know, you think about the task that you're after and then you go, well, what am I using? What am I connecting to? And that's really all that I care about. So it might be the network plumbing between those two points, right? What is the actual pathway? But it might be the server or virtual machine that you're using. It might mean the development environment that you're using on that particular machine. And then, of course, you're connecting to clients. And then maybe we set up a test development area where you can't hurt uh, you know, anybody else with the testing that you might be doing. So all of that might also be considered part of your network infrastructure. And from your perspective, that becomes really, really important, but it might actually be just a small part of the overall network infrastructure. So in the end, there are a number of ways to think about network infrastructure, depending on what you're worried about. What we always say is that the best network infrastructure is actually invisible. And if you ever have to think about it, there's usually a problem. Or maybe you want to build something, but it's really about your perspective. Well, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. And hey, no matter what infrastructure you're talking about, may those packets always get to their destinations.